Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth Hansen and this is Keto Confab, our Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, time to chitty chat about our lives and our choice to live in a keto lifestyle um, following the uh, uh, directions of uh, Dr. Boz and some other things from like Dr. Barry and Dr. Berg and, and everything that are useful. Um, so tonight we have a new person with us, and as always, we like to give that new person a time to tell their story of how they got into keto and how they made their choices and what they've been doing and blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> Lo, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Thank you. Um, I'm Lo Baker from New Hampshire, and I have been um, low carb under 20 for a year and a half, and I was working with a naturopath. And she was all about very lean meat, no more than three ounces and just your vegetables in lean meat. And um, I have um, an A1C of over 14 and my glucose was over 380 something. And so I started working with this naturopath and I was losing weight and, um, but I had absolutely no energy, no, nothing in my tank to give and folding the folding laundry I was just exhausted and emptied the dishwasher and um, I knew something was missing. And, a, and about a month ago, I found Dr. Boz and learned about fat <laughs> and, um, and how uh, for, for fuel. And um, I've said this before, but um, I've lost 166 pounds and my A1C is now 5.2. Wow. And, uh, and uh, my glucose this morning was 87. Wow. And, so um, I'm very happy and finding Dr. Boz has certainly made a, a huge difference for me. I have an appointment with my naturopath in a couple of weeks. So it's going to be interesting that I'm going to tell her that I'm eating fat and I don't know how happy she's going to be, <laughs> but it's working for me. So I'm thrilled to have found these groups and it's, you know, it's nice to know there's other people out there with similar stories and um, support and I was one of those who was really upset that I, my, my pea strips weren't turning purple. And I was like, why isn't this happening? Um, I did that a, a couple of weeks ago and, and then I did get the ketos in a can and, and it kickstarted my liver and um, now I'm doing them on my own. I, I think my ketones, my ketones this morning were 2.2. Um, wow, excellent. Absolutely yeah. fabulous. And, you know, to be honest with you, Lo, I was pretty surprised when you said you had been 20, 20 carbs or less for a year and a half, and you yeah. still weren't peeing ketones. That is, nope. that's, that's like how amazing. insulin resistant my body is. And, and wow, yeah. And coming down from a 14 on your A1C to a 5.7, did you say? 5.2. Oh, 5.2. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> My goal know, is to get under, under five. Dr. Yeah. Boz would like it under five for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when I first started, mine was 6.2 and I'm now sitting at a 4.7. Nice. Um, yeah, absolutely fabulous. Um, there are a lot of things that we can point to when we're working keto and doing the program that are wins. I mean, um, waist measurement, neck measurement, hip measurement, um, our A1C, our ketones, our blood sugars, uh, not just our weight. Um, but way to go, Lo. Way Thank to go. You. Absolutely. And I really hope that your natural path listens to you and realizes that you actually are listening to a person who's had personal experience with both her and her mom and her dad, right. um, but also all of her clients, you know, right. um, her patients. Uh, she has patients. I have clients. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, I hope she'll listen. I, Me too. I hope she'll listen. So, but unfortunately, so many are so locked in their belief systems about things. Right. Um, so and the other thing is she just has me on so many supplements and mm -hmm. I'm just like, I don't want to be on all these pills and, you know, I'm just taking so many. Oh, the one good thing, um, within the past few weeks, since I've started, I've been on high blood pressure medicine for over 30 years, if mm -hmm. not longer. And, 
Um, one morning is one day I was at work. I used to suffer from vertigo and I just was like, oh my goodness, you guys, you're going to, I'm a teacher, a dog, I'm a dog trainer. And um, I'm like telling my students, um, I can't do a certain thing because if I bend my head over, I'm going to pass out. I have vertigo again. And like it step, stayed for a couple of days and I'm like, you know, I better check my blood pressure. And it was um, 85 over 58. Oh. And I've been on blood pressure med for 30 something, you know, for many, many years. And I, so I called my regular doctor saying, I think we need to lower the medication a little. Yeah. So they got me off of one and my goal is to get off of everything. So yes, yes, yeah. yes. So it wasn't vertigo. It was, I had nothing there to give. It was very low blood pressure. Yeah. Well, very good. So yeah. um, over this year and a half that you've been doing this low carb, what has your personal physician said about it and the weight loss and the lowering of the A1C and blah, blah, blah. I was very transparent with her and told her I was working with a naturopath and they actually worked together. I shared everything with each, with each other, Good. blood work and labs and all that stuff. And she clearly saw my, my regular doctor clearly saw results. And she was like, you know, you're doing great. Continue with what you're doing. So okay. she Good. was very supportive. Good. And, um, it was basically spinach and kale and chicken breast. <laughs> That's what I was living on. And uh, now I'm living on fat. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, Tammy, you wanted to say something? Well, I wanted to say something to Lowe. If, if your naturopath gives you a hard time about it, just say, just give her some videos or some people to watch or, some, or email her uh, one of your favorite things, maybe with Dr. Boz or a different one that you found or multiple ones that you found so that and ask her to please watch these before um, she says what she's gonna say, if she starts right. off that way. Right. Um, Cause you did your research and you decided that this way is for you. And she needs to listen to what you say yeah. and watch and take the time to watch some of the videos. So Thank be prepared, you. be prepared to send her something or yeah. Get it on your phone and send it to her right now. I says I want. I know. To she, I know my cholesterol's already gone up since my last lab, and um, and I know she's gonna comment on that. Like, can't have the fat, and I'm just like, no, watch this video. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have Good. that, and you know, my um, my triglycerides is very low. My HDL is very high, but my LDL is a little high too. And they want to put me on statins, and my and CAC score is zero, so I'm not gonna do it. But be prepared with right. with your comeback before you get there yes. um, and, and have some videos that you ask her to watch. Cool, thank you. Um, I don't wanna interrupt with you, Elizabeth, but I wanted to say something too to Lo. Um, I, I watch a lot of stuff. I'm retired now. I used to be in the computer field and uh, I watch a lot of stuff and I found, well, someone else recommended it. I didn't find it myself. But there is a Dr. Cywis who is located down in Florida and he's actually a bariatric doctor. Mm -hmm. And he has gotten on the keto bandwagon and he's actually talking to some of his, I know this is a Dr. Boz Zoom, so I'm not gonna take too much time. I just wanna point you to him. And there's a group, there's a, a YouTube couple called two crazy ketos okay and they interviewed dr cyrus and they gave him their blood results and he spoke for an hour and a half explaining why the fat is so important why the triglycerides are important how it all works inside of the digestion and I've told this group before, I had a very bad high school biology teacher and I didn't understand the first thing about biology. But anyway, like Tammy was just telling you, if you have Dr. Cywis in addition to Dr. Boz in your back pocket, um, I mean, they're very uh, convincing. And then there's other doctors we can tell you about too, but. I wanted to make sure you knew about Dr. Cyrus. Thank you. So I'll look up two crazy ketos. Yeah, I'll try to put it in the chat here so you understand how Dr. Cyrus is 
name is. I was going to ask you how to spell that because I can put a link um, in the description to this week's meeting um, for that video with yeah. uh, the two crazy Katos, but I'd like to know how to spell his name. <laughs> Um, I'm new to Zoom, so this is all brand new to me. So I'm like, chat, I don't even know how to do that. Oh, and okay. at the bottom, it says chat. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. Um, and then, and then like the, chrom the chronometer, that is a foreign language to me. Okay. And somebody in, a, in another group is actually going to help me, and we're going to do a private one on one on Friday. She's going to, I'm like, that Excellent. doesn't, it, it Excellent. makes no sense to me at all. So I'm like, I don't even know how to do this thing. Okay, well, that's good. I, I love chronometer and I hate chronometer because, well, because sometimes I don't want to put in what I've eaten. <laughs> <laughs> because just putting it in, it's like, see, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> you know, um, I did earlier on the neurons group, I saw somebody post um, that the i4 has an app that actually does the Dr. Boz ratio for you. And mm -hmm. I just, I just downloaded that and I'm like, how cool is that? So I was able to get that. Yeah, that was really, that was neat. Um, speaking of cholesterol, um, uh, my, the last time I was at the doctor, oh, was it December or January? I don't know when. I've, I try and forget. <laughs> um, October they, or? No, or no, it was, after that. Okay. it was after, you know, I had COVID in October and I think it was two months later I was supposed to go yeah, right. in and I went in. Okay. Um, Anyway, she was commenting on my cholesterol, which was um, 239. It had been 289 a few months earlier, but it was down to 239 because um, Dr. Boz suggests that you not test your cholesterol for at least six months while you're transitioning into keto yep. um, because it is going to be higher at least the first six months and then it will level off. And, um, but I had to go in and they tested it and it was 289 and they're like statins, statins. And I'm like, no, give me some time. So I was happy with the drop, you know, yes. uh, yeah. to 239 and I'm not concerned about it, but she's like, oh, we have to do something. You're going to have a heart attack. And, and I'm like, no, um, anyway, so I bought the Fora six you know yeah, the monitor that yep um that dr boss suggested i just recently bought it i had another monitor but i just recently bought that one and um one of the reasons i wanted to buy it was because it has the uric acid strips and it has the cholesterol strips so um I, you get 10 strips with it. And so I decided I was going to test once a week and I was going to play around a bit with my diet to see if, you know, I could change it. Well, the first time I did it, it was 239. And the next time I did it, it was 238. And I'm like, okay. And then I skipped a week. No, I skipped two weeks and I did it this morning and it's 193. Wow, congratulations. I'm like, yes. And what have I done? What have I done differently? I'm eating more eggs and more fat. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'm eating That's more eggs hear. and more fat. That sounds and, encouraging. And I think it was Patricia suggested I add ghee because I have problems with, um, or somebody did here. Um, and I have problems with milk products. And they felt that I wouldn't react as badly to ghee and I'm not reacting to ghee badly, which is great. Um, and so when I bake my steak, I bit of, put a big old blob of ghee on there and I bake it with that and it's delicious <laughs> and I don't react to it and it's bringing my cholesterol down. So I'm That's quite crazy. happy. I listened to a video from Dr. Berg and um, he, it was titled, Why I Eat Four Eggs a Day and You Should Too. And um, so I watched that and it is an excellent video, video explaining the wonders of eggness and all the things that eggs give you and the things you can do with eggs um, and uh, how they can really help the body. And uh, so just look it up, Dr. Berg eggs um 
and it's a, it's a great one. I'll try and put a link in the in the description if I remember. Well, I better write a note. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bird eggs. Um, then there's just one more thing I want to um, mention, and then I'll open it up to everybody else because I want to see how Christine's doing. And Renee's back. She's been gone a week or two. And um, I want to hear from her and Wilma, if you want to tell us how you're doing in the chat and Melody too. Um, and uh, anybody else that has anything to say. The one other thing I wanted to mention is I was watching um, a YouTube video um, from Steve at Serious Keto. And um, I, I really kind of like this guy because uh, he's just a regular old guy. And um, he likes to review keto foods and see if they really are keto or not. And um, he does it in a very scientific method. He waits until he's fasting and he's got a blood sugar that's like 80 or 85 or something. And then he'll try the keto food and he tests his blood sugar with his monitor. Um, I think at one hour and then two hours to see if there's a, a glucose spike um, with it and uh, to see if it had started coming down at two hours. And he, he, when he was doing this one particular video, I saw he was wearing a continuous glucose monitor and he was trying to check and make sure that the monitor was linking up with his, his blood stick monitor. And it was because he said that um, some of the continuous glucose monitors are not nearly as accurate as they say they are, and um, that when you get them, you should always titrate and see if they actually are, are running the same as what you get with your blood stick monitor. And anyway, he uh, reviewed four different keto breads. Um, now, all of these keto breads had some sort of wheat fiber or wheat something in them, so I can't eat them. I'm allergic to wheat, can't have wheat. Um, and I actually was pretty surprised because these did not spike his blood sugar um, and did not drop his ketones. And uh, I thought that, you know, any little scrap of any kind of grain was going to drop your blood ketones and pump up your blood sugar. But I guess with some people, it doesn't, it probably would make my blood sugar go sky high, you know. Um, but yeah. Um, anyway, uh, that's my little interesting tidbit. I'll link that video in this, you know, in the description, um, just in case you're interested in keto breads, because he talks about the texture and the mouthfeel and how they tear and how they toast up and, and everything. And I, and I, after watching that one, I watched a few others and he, he talks about keto cocoa and keto coffees and keto teas and keto bars, all kinds of keto bars, none of which I can have because they have all sorts of ingredients I can't have. Um, <laughs> um, but anyway, so that's all I wanted to say. And um, Miss Christine, would you like to give us an update on you, how you're doing? Oh, yes, I'd love to. Yep, I'm unmuted. It's so great to see you all. And I'm so excited to have everybody at low that's brand new, but not really brand new. And everybody that has all this experience under their belt. It's it's wonderful for me. So I was just calculating now and my latest uh, no sugar venture. I am 71 days of no sugar and I am 18 days on uh, Dr. Ba's keto continuum. So I'm still doing, thank you, thank you. I'm still doing the, you know, don't worry about calories kind of thing. And I'm going, what? You know, because the amount of food is like, what? <laughs> but um, I, I'm i peeing ketones. I'm happy about that. I, I'm allergic to stevia, so I can't do the canned stuff, but I can do the other little things. But I don't really need them, I don't think. And I don't, I didn't really notice much of a difference taking them than to how I normally feel. Oh, and by the way, I was looking at this Dr. Ba's book. So okay. she's got her dairy. So there's um, ghee is best right uh -huh. there. 
<laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I, I enjoy her so much. And uh, when I went sugar-free, I slammed this finger in the car door and it always clicked and did, you know, it just hurt and it's fatter than my other fingers, but it stopped clicking uh, about three weeks into sugar-free. And I was, and I also had a frozen shoulder six weeks ago, but I don't really have a sh frozen shoulder. I've been doing some, some other things, you know, but it, it's still a little sore, but there's really something important about doing all this. I, it's, it's so, it's so odd for me because I really want to be a vegetarian. I really want to be, but I, I don't think that's the right thing. So, <laughs> you know, and I have lots of lentils in my cabinet and, you know, so it, it's, it's hard it's hard because I think that those foods are on the earth for a reason. I just don't know what that reason is right now. <laughs> I thought it was for, you know, for good health, but I'm really not sure that that, that that's right. Um, and I'm enjoying the food. Uh, I did eat, she was talking about, uh, she had told someone to eat a stick of butter. I couldn't do it. I could eat maybe two tablespoons with some salt even added onto it. I couldn't do it. Oh, and the, the blood pressure thing. Uh, when I was doing the salt, uh, my blood pressure went up crazy, like 177 over 110 from a, from a pretty normal blood pressure. Um, and it went back down kind of gradually and then stayed down. And so I challenged it with a little bit of salt and it just was fine. So I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure if I, do, do you ladies do a lot of salt? Do you eat a lot of salt? Yeah, um, I mean, like I, when you say a lot of salt, what does that mean? Go okay, ahead, Patricia. Um, I'm going to reference that same doctor again, Dr. Cyrus, because he it's an hour and a half long, so it's pretty long, but I listened to it. I think it's so good. I've listened to it again, for the second time today. And he talks about salt in there. And he says he has a tablespoon a day. And the person that he uh, was, you know, one of the two crazy ketos, he's in his uh, daytime job, he is a ref for high school football and lacrosse. So he does a lot of running. And he says that he probably has twice that when on his uh, refing days. So um, what I do, um, you'll see, um, oh, you've maybe heard already Dr. Boz talk about sole water, which I, Scott is the um, authority here. He's the doctor. But I think the truth of it is, I'm not a biologist. But um, water is, can only absorb so much sodium. It gets saturated. So it really doesn't matter how much uh, sodium you put into the jar, okay? For me, I take a Kikoman, an old Kikoman soy sauce dispenser, and I put like um, two tablespoons of the rock crystals into the bottom of it, and then I fill it up with water. I shake it up. And then in the morning when I make my coffee, I put two tablespoons of that sole water into my coffee. So I've been drinking that for over a year now. I like the taste of it. And um, now I will admit that after, after lunch, I'll put heavy whipping cream in my afternoon coffee. But um, so I feel like I'm getting lots of salt already with that sole water. Plus, you know, I, I salt my steak. I eat a lot of um, steak. But I, I hope you guys will take me seriously with this Dr. Cyrus because he explains quite a bit about why sodium is the main thing that you want to get into your body and not so much the magnesium and the potassium. If you take care of your, your sodium problem, you'll take care of your magnesium problem, according to him. But anyway, that's what I wanted to say. 
So does Dr. Hansen have anything to add or rebut well, what yeah, Patricia yeah. said? Um, first of all, I'm a, I'm a doctor of biology. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, it's, it's true that, that water, you know, you can only put so much sodium into water uh, and, and, you know, before it, it, it gets saturated, you know, but that's true of anything, you know, anything you put in water, you can only put so much sugar in water or oxygen or carbon dioxide or, or you know, anything. In fact, that goes for any any solvent, um, any liquid. You know, if you add if you add uh, salt or or sugar or whatever to to alcohol or ammonia or you know whatever, any liquid is only going to be able to hold so much so much of an amount of whatever thing you're dissolving in it. Um, the other thing is, you know, uh, I guess I should listen to that guy's. Um, Dr. S yeah, I should listen to that guy's uh, uh, videos because, um, you know, it, it's, I mean, if, if, you, if you have too much sodium in the body, you're going, to, uh, you're going to run into problems. And if you have too little sodium, you're going to run, run into problems as well, you know. And, and I mean, there's, there's a very important balance. Well, at least, I mean, that's, that's what we, you know, learn in, in the classes, you know, there's, there's a very important balance between potassium and sodium, you know, in, in the cells uh, uh, and, uh, and and all of the ions really, uh, you know, calcium, uh, magnesium, uh, manganese, uh, boron, um, you know, all of, the, all of the ions that are in the body, all of the electrolytes, you need to have each one of them. Uh, that's what they teach us anyway, you know, I mean, maybe this, this guy has uh, uncovered something different, you know, it's kind of like the, the uh the, the food pyramid you know because we've been taught that well you know uh the, the the big base of the food pyramid is is all of the all of the uh starches you know all, all the carbohydrate sources and those are just really important that you have 10 or 11 servings of those per day and and you know we end up learning well no that's that's actually the opposite <laughs> so you know um yeah i should probably listen to one or two of those videos and see uh uh, see what he's saying and see if I can see if see if it jives with what I understand from uh, you know biochemistry and things like that. Christine, one of the things I can add into your your question about salt is not all salts are created equal. Um, I will say that the basic bleached iodized table salt, white table salt that we buy is pretty much trash. It's terrible on the system. Um, even Dr. Boz recommends pink Himalayan salt. Um, there's a company out there called Salt Works, um, and it's online. And the great thing is they've probably got a hundred or more different kinds of salts. I mean, there are sea, dead sea salts, there are mineral salts, there's just all kinds of different salts. And you might want to, especially if you're concerned uh, or you start using salt and it's affecting your blood pressure, if you go online and start looking at some of those different salts and seeing how uh, uh, and seeing if you can get a sample of them and see if maybe the different ones are, won't affect you a little differently. Um, I do know that when I switched from regular table salt to the pink Himalayan salts, it didn't affect me at all like regular table salt was. Uh, I mean, in fact, I can probably use more pink Himalayan salt. I can, I feel like I can <laughs> salt till the cows come home and it doesn't seem to affect me detrimentally, at least so far it has not. And I've been doing keto now for uh, just, just over a year. So just some other foods for thought. Oh, thanks Renee. Yeah, I've used pink salt in the past. I never use other salt, and I don't like the taste of salt, so I, I'm not sure what that is. But I take minerals from the Redmond mines. Well, one, one of the things that we, we always taught when I used to teach nutrition classes is you should salt to taste. If you don't desire a salt, if you're not craving the salt, either on the dish that you've eaten, um, then leave it off. Now there is one exception to that rule. If you start eating foods and everything, like literally everything just starts tasting very, very bland, you do not have enough salt in your diet. 
your taste buds are very, very dependent upon the right amount of salt in your body. So if your foods are tasting super, super bland, even though they're, that's why you've always cooked them, you are probably low on circulating sodium in your system. Oh, thanks for that. <laughs> um, the electrolyte balance in the body is very delicate. And um, if, if, let's say, you start taking a new calcium supplement, it's going to change the balance of the potassium and magnesium and manganese and sodium in the body. So um, I, I, I ask people to be cautious with supplementation and um, it's, magnesium is typically one I'm not nervous about people supplementing. Potassium supplementation makes me very nervous, very, very nervous because potassium balance can go off really quickly and very easily and dramatically and cause a lot of problems. Um, and um, I like salt. I love the taste of salt. Um, but I do realize that if, if I happen to get into the potato chip world, um, which is not using pink Himalayan salt, I, I do retain too much um, fluid and it, it's not happiness. Um, so I think Renee is, is very good in pointing out that table salt, American table salt, good old Morton salt probably isn't the best thing and um, probably keeps people's blood pressures higher. And Renee, until you mentioned that, I didn't realize that when I'm salting my food, I'm using table salt because I was told to use it because it has iodine and I have a thyroid thing. And I should stop that today <laughs> and put in my Redmond salt. I mean, come on. What, you know, I, I just don't think of things for myself. I think of them for other people and tell them, you know, when I'm having a meeting now about salt, blah, blah, blah. But do I think about what's on my own shelf? No, that's not good. Um, so I like salt. Um, I put salt on everything I eat. Well, I mean, if I eat berries or something, I wouldn't, but I rarely, if ever eat berries now. Um, but uh, there are just some people that can't deal with a lot of salt. Um, Scott, I can't remember. Do you put a little salt in your water each day? Hello? Oh, yes, I do, yep. Oh, okay. Um, Scott is kind of sensitive to salt. He's got a constitution that's a bit sensitive, so he doesn't salt a lot of things. Um, I'm the opposite way. I seem to need a lot of salt. Um, but anyway, yeah, salt. Very interesting. Good conversation about that. Um, so, Renee, what's the update with Renee? Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's, it's been kind of, I guess, boring around here with me. I'm just dealing with, with life. I have my poor ex-husband, his, um, his mother's older and younger brother both died within the last two months. One died last month, one died two days ago. And uh, so I kind of, you know, I'm feeling sad for him because, you know, that's, you know, we may not be together anymore and he has remarried, but, you know, I still care a lot about his family and um, it's, it just kind of breaks my heart because they were good. I knew both of these gentlemen and they were really nice guys. So um, I think one of the things that um, I have, I've really found a lot about keto is that when I'm doing keto right, I feel good. Um, and even on days when I, I decide to cheat, <laughs> um, and I know I shouldn't cheat, but I, you know, I do, um, I find that I feel, it's like almost immediately I feel sluggish and almost yucky. Um, every time I try to do, you know, foods that I loved to snack on in the past, it's like I'll have it and I'll go, oh my gosh, that's 
that's just nasty. And my stomach bothers me and my, I get like this almost immediate headache because my body has decided that it really doesn't like that stuff and really prefers me to not have it. Um, I just need to listen to that instead of my erroneous taste buds that are trying to tell me, oh, yes, you need a cookie. <laughs> you know or oh you need you need to have those chips you know because your friends eating chips and salsa you know the salsa is really good for you so you know the the few chips they won't hurt you at all <clears throat> wrong um uh i know becky was talking about she she needs she has a low acting thyroid and so she needs the iodine one of the things that I have discovered is that for me to get enough iodine in my system, I've started eating more foods that come from the sea, um, whether that's um, fishes that come from the sea or like seaweed or kelp. Um, and if you are a consummate um, snacker like I am and you just really love to have something to snack on it at night it's just that ritual habit thing then one of the things that I've been able to do is to switch gears and rather than uh, munching on a bag of say um, uh, potato chips or corn chips or whatever else I can actually take and chop up some fresh kale and then I spray it down with a little bit of olive oil, put some of my pink Himalayan salt on it, bake it for about 250 degrees, and I've got kale chips. And I'm telling you, they taste just like potato chips. You know, so now I'm getting a good vegetable that's good for me. I'm getting a little bit of extra iron. I'm getting a little bit of iodine. I'm going to get a little bit of salt. And, and my, my habitual part of me feels like I'm, you know, cheating to no end. So it kind of makes my, my whole, my whole system, everybody's going, yay. <laughs> so uh, other than that, um, I'm at a holding pattern again on my, uh, on my weight. Um, and I think part of it is I'm at, or have been going through a little bit of some stress with stuff in my life and I'm not going to tell, you know, a tale the as you know, oldest time. <laughs> But um, when I when I'm stressed, I will tend to hold on to weight more uh, because when we're when we're stressed, it affects your spleen. Your spleen in turn starts affecting the gallbladder, which in turn affects your stomach, which means you don't digest your food. Even if it's good foods for you, you don't digest it as well. Um, and so I know I'm losing some of those nutrients, which is kind of par for the course in there. Um, so I'm, I keep vacillating back and forth between my uh, 265 and 270. I just keep bouncing. And so some days I'm sitting right there for two or three days in a row and then I'll bounce and then I'll come right back down and I'll bounce. And I did this when I was at 275 too. And then all of a sudden I just boom, dropped 10 pounds. So I'm not freaked by it. I'm, I'm more frustrated than anything else, but you know, I have come to find out with the lovely advice from my wonderful friend, Miss Hansen, that um, if I just trust my body and I let it do it at its pace and I quit trying to force it to do it my way, um, it's going to not only come off when it's ready to come off, but when it does come off, it will truly stay off. Unless I'm, you know, again, unless I'm cheating and going crazy, um, I am very insulin resistant. So I have to be very ultra smart about what I'm eating and remember that, that I am insulin resistant. Um, my biggest plus, I think, has been that every time I go to see one of my doctors for things I've had, I uh, had my cancer doctors blown away, my uh, neurologist for my neck surgery every time he sees me because I just don't understand why you're healing so well and I said well you got a little time <laughs> um, but I truly think that going on keto changed the ability of my body to heal and recover from um, any kind of medical interventions I've had to have done so I'm like big thumbs up so that's my story and I'm sticking to it <laughs> Yeah, very good. Um, just a note on iodine. 
I just forget stuff for myself. You know, I make a list of the things I have to look up for clients, but I forget things. I forgot I purchased this iodine supplement drops so I could stop using table salt. Silly me. And I also purchased a bunch of seaweed snack packs so I could munch on them. I just completely forgot I had those because I, I want that munch, that crunch, that chew thing sometimes. And I'm like, I just got nothing, you know, but I, I do like the taste of seaweed. And um, so, well, I'm going to remedy that. Anyway, so Miss Patricia, it looked like you were going to say something. Were you? Well, I don't want to cut anybody else off. I had a couple of more things I wanted to say, but I think we're running out of time here. Maybe Wilma or Melody wanted to say something. They've been very quiet on chat. They haven't said much. Well, um, I'll just, if you don't speak up quick, I'm going to go. Okay, I wanted to report again that uh, this is my third week of doing a 36 hour fast. Uh -huh. uh, from Sunday afternoon until Tuesday morning, no trouble at all. For me, it's a psychological thing, you know. <coughs> I just, I like, I was sitting there on, <coughs> excuse me, Monday afternoon, and I said, I wonder what's going on in my stomach when I'm hearing all this gurgling stuff going on, you know. And I was thinking to myself, I sure wish. I, I had some kind of a graphic to tell me what was actually going on. And then I went on to a Zoom meeting and somebody pointed me out <laughs> about, you know, after the six hour, this happens, after the 12th hour, that happened. So that was fun. But then I found out about Dr. Cyrus and he goes through stuff so thoroughly that I've got plenty of stuff to think about when I'm doing the fasting now. <coughs> excuse me had something in my throat but anyway I wanted to report that um, I'm doing real well <coughs> and also I wanted to encourage everyone to watch the Dr. Boz Tuesday night programs she is <coughs> she's um, focusing on the book called Atomic Habits and I never did take the brains course with her, but it seems to me like she's trying to incorporate some of that brain stuff into Tuesday nights now, using atomic habits as her trigger topics. So I, I'm really very pleased with the Tuesday night program. So how do you find that, Patricia? <clears throat> so it's Dr. Boz on youtube okay are you on the neurons uh facebook page christine i am yeah um they always put a link on there usually sunday night or sometime monday they put a link for this week's tuesday night live of course you don't you don't have to watch it live no you don't have to you, watch it you live. could watch it weeks later you can catch up later okay so, so dr buzz on youtube and it's atomic keto right no okay I Atomic, let, it's a book. If, let me finish uh, that point. Um, also on YouTube, you can listen to the Atomic Habits book by James Cleary, I think, or Clear, James Clear, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I so if you don't have book, a book, you could listen to it or, or read it. And yeah. then she is using that as her sort of trigger for her discussions. Yeah, Thank you. I had purchased that book on Amazon, not Amazon, uh, Audible a couple of years ago and never got around to listening to it. <laughs> so this morning, I actually listened to the very first chapter. And I'm like, okay, if I can finish listening to this and actually put into work what it suggests, I could make some progress here, but we'll just see. <laughs> we'll just see what I do. Um, Can I add one other exciting thing I forgot to tell you all? Sure. 
just this is uh, this is not an ad i just want to give myself a pat on the back i have been working for the past three weeks on an online store for my business and i am 75 percent done so i'm like really excited but i've still got another 25 percent to go but i feel like keto has given me the ability to focus Mm -hmm. and, and so guys, if you've got a focus that you feel like you're not focusing well, check what you're eating. Because I found when I stopped being able to focus, I inadvertently, I wasn't realizing it, but I either was not drinking enough water um, or I had cheated and I didn't think about what I was shoveling in my mouth. So keto really does help you focus guys. Yeah. Um, Patricia, M Melody has asked how you got past 28 hours of fasting because she she's done a 28, but she'd like to get to a 36. But with the way her work and everything is, um, it, it it ends up that she would be ending her fast at eight o'clock at night and she doesn't want to eat at eight o'clock. So what do you what do you got to say there? It's, I'm not going to, I'm, I don't think that's appropriate for me to, I'm retired, so I have plenty of time to play with. Um, Dr. Boz used to do it starting on a Sunday afternoon after her church meal. And that's what I did. And it, for me, because I wake up very early, I wake up like at 430 in the morning. For me, it's very easy to start at four o'clock in the afternoon go around until four o'clock on Tuesday morning. So I don't know if, if Melody would end on at eight o'clock, that would mean she would have to start uh, eight o'clock in a Sunday morning if she was doing starting Sunday. So maybe, um, maybe start at four o'clock. Uh, I don't know how, I don't know what to do. Um, maybe, I don't know how you would feel about this melody. Um, I'm not saying having a meal at that 8 PM, but maybe break your fast by having some beef broth and, and, or some sardines right about that time. And that's she's not vegetarian. Remember, honey, oh, she's vegetarian. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Low, um, Melody is our resident vegetarian. And um, um, okay. we want to encourage her and, and help well, her. A, veg a vegetable broth right about then is probably a vegetable broth blend of some kind, I think might, even, might be what you could do at that point to break your fast. I don't know. My idea is, Melody, look at when you want to eat. You know, like if you want to break your fast at four o'clock in the afternoon on a particular day, then count the hours backwards and you'll know when you need to start and just make it work. You know, I mean, if you want to break your fast at four o'clock in the afternoon so you can eat a meal and then go to bed at your regular time, then you count the hours back, 36 hours, and then there you go. Um, that's just my idea. Of course, of know. course, you what you really could do if you can just get your mind focused is go go ahead and do the 48 hours. Go go straight to 48 hours. Yeah. Um, you have to start before work and go from there. Okay, so all right. So if you start before work, no matter what time it is, 24 hours is back before work. And then to make it 36, that's it, another it, well, eight, nine, 10, 10 hours more, no, 12 hours more. Well, I don't know, Melody, you're going to have to figure this one out because, you know, this whole fast thing is very individual. You know, Dr. Boz and Dr. Burke and Dr. Barry and Patricia and me and Renee, we can tell you all sorts of things, but you, you have to just figure it out for yourself because we don't know your schedule, you know, and yeah. 
She says, I have to start for work and then go I, from there. I yeah. think it's one of the blessings though of keto is the fact that you can individualize your fast to you. I mean, like, like Elizabeth said, you can simply count back as to when you would need to start that. And, and maybe your fast actually should start even before that, like your fast would start, say, the night before, like right before you go to bed. That's the beginning of your fast. I mean, we call breakfast a breakfast for a reason because we're breaking the fast of, from sleeping. So maybe that could be your jumping off point to, from the time you go to bed and then 36 hours from that. Hey, Wilma might have an idea. Yes, Wilma? Oh, I was just going to say, I just finished my fifth 72-hour fast yesterday. Go, Wilma. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. So, and last year, I did eight 72-hour fasts. So we're working on wow. the autophagy this year. And wow. I, I seem to have no problem. I just load up on the fat before I do my fast. And I breeze through the 72 hours with no problem. Um, you know, Melody, my other idea is, um, okay, so it's eight o'clock at night, uh, and Dr. Boz says that we can do a broth, you know, a bone broth for us, but for you, it'd be a vegetable broth, and we can have tea and we can have coffee, no cream, no butter, um, and everything, and it still doesn't break the fast, technically. Um, what if you just fill your belly with so much broth, you know, that it thinks it's full and you go ahead and go to bed at nine o'clock or whatever. I mean, and, you know, I know you say you're hungry at lunchtime um, it, when, you know, you eat at eight and then you're hungry in the afternoon and stuff. What about you just sip broth and tea and black coffee all day? I mean, I don't, I, I can't remember whether you drink coffee, actually, I've forgotten that. Um, Elizabeth, but, didn't Dr. Boz mention something about she would take her salt and put a little salt every time she would get hungry during her fast, she would put just a, just a little pinch of that salt on her tongue to help her through her fast when she would get hungry? Yeah. Or am now, I remembering wrong? No, no, you're remembering right, but I think Melody had a condition with her ears that caused a problem if she ate too much salt so I try not to suggest salt to her um no broth isn't breaking the fast they say broth isn't breaking the fast so um yeah she tried the salt thing a couple of times but it doesn't yes Patricia good night good night Patricia um yeah um so, you know, try, try the broth, make yourself a whole bunch of vegetable broth and be ready for it. And, you know, just broth yourself to death, <laughs> Melody, you know, and I think Wilma was right. You really need to load up on the fat right before you go into uh, a fast. So some hard cheeses, some olive oil and olives and stuff load up on the fats and then go into that fast. And, you know, if you can't, um, I, I think drinking the broth and everything at 36 hours is a good idea. Um, oh, you might not be doing fat right, she says. Um, hey, Lo, were you able to find the chat? I see the chat. I do have a computer question because I'm new to Zoom. Okay. Once this is over, will I be able to get that link? So how, like, how do I get to the chats once the Zoom is over? Um, I believe I have a separate um, link for the chat. It does record the chat. I don't typically put it up with the video, but I could get it to you. I tell you what, um, you're on the Neurons Facebook yes. page, right? Um, yep. I, can, I can send you a, a private message. Uh, with, uh, let's see if I can send, I think, 
think I could send this as a link. I don't know. But I'm not I can, sure for private message in Facebook if we have to be friends or not. I think so. No, no. Oh, okay. Since we're both in the neurons group, we can message each other back and forth. Oh, okay. Handy Thank dandy, you. that is. Yeah. Um, if I can remember people's names. But see, your name's real easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, Christine's name, I would have to write it down because it's not a familiar name, you know? You know what, um, I just Googled Dr. Cywis and it went to Dr. Cywis, the Carb Addiction Doc YouTube. And it okay, looks like cool. it's youtube.com channel UCK4MK. Yeah, what are you particularly looking for, Lo, out of the thing, the link to Well, that? in the, I, I, see, I see a little number that says 24 chats, because I, I know I saw, I forget who it was that, um, that posted the link to Dr. Cywis. So um, Tammy I'll be able did. to do a Google. I'll be able to find him. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or I can just copy that and send it to you. That would be um, great. Just so I can get the correct spelling. Yeah. Yeah. The spelling's an issue. Um, I'm not a good speller. But anyway, well, I think we're going to hold on. Leave. Hold on. Hold on. Sure, if sure. you'll go over to chat. Yeah. There's three little buttons off to the side. You'll see a thing that looks like a piece of paper, a little happy face, and then you'll see three little dots off to the yeah. side. Yeah. Click on that. It says save chat. Oh, thank you. Oh. My second husband was a computer programmer, so I kind of like I am computer a illiterate. Thank you. That's <laughs> great. Thank you, Renee. Save chat. Look at that. Oh, oh we've all awesome. learned something tonight. Yeah, that's exciting. Now the question yes. is, where did it save to? No, I have to go find it somewhere. <laughs> right. That where is a good it? question. Where did that thing go? Yeah. Um, all right, everybody. Uh, oh, Scott's still on here. I was going to say, okay, ladies. And then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Scott's still here. Um, can we call you a lady, honey? <laughs> you know, maybe make me an honorary lady, I suppose. <laughs> maybe I'll choose to identify as a lady just for these few minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. You can choose to identify as a lady. All right. Okay, so for, for anyone who asked, um, I'm looking, I, I went ahead and saved the chat just out of curiosity to see what it would do. And it says this PC forward slash documents forward slash Zoom forward slash, and then it has today's date. With the it says keto confab weekly meeting and it so that was the folder it named for me and that's what it put it under. Oh, so it's under it. it, it it's in a folder. Yeah, uh, in my documents folder under Zoom. Okay, thank yeah, you. So so look for something in your documents under Zoom. That's cool. That's good to know. <laughs> um, I didn't know that. All right, well, I'm going to end the recording and thank you and we'll see everybody next week. Oops, I'm on the wrong thing. Okay, here we go. All right. Good night, everyone.